Welcome back. The people of Kamukunji constituency decided to give this one man a second chance in leading them. Despite what happened to him back in December 2012, Yusuf Hassan Abdi has stood his ground saying, I will still lead my people regardless of the situation I am in. Yusuf Hassan was injured in a grenade attack in Nairobi's Isli, ending up confined to hospital beds in, Ke in Kenya and even in South Africa. Well, of course, as far as his past is concerned, he has worked with the BBC, Voice of America, and even with the UN. Today we want to focus on Kamukunji constituency and how far he has taken it so far. Welcome to the Power Breakfast Show. Thank you. Hassan Abdi. Thank you so much. Many thanks indeed. It's a pleasure to come back. Right, mm -hmm. absolutely. We totally appreciate it. In fact, the, the, the last day we... The, the, fine, the, the, the last, last day you time appeared, we went was there during was a debate. A, the, mm. When you were candidate. Debate, uh, right. Uh, about how many, how many were you? Five? Mm. Yeah. 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 And, and you won. Yeah. Absolutely. How, how, how's it, how has it been for you so far? I mean, well, it's been uh, difficult uh, trying to um, overcome the... Uh, the serious injuries that I had uh, sustained on the 7th of December. But at the same time, it has been a period of healing, a pre period of uh, uh, learning more about uh, the Kenyan people and the Kamukunji people uh, because of uh, the fact that uh, I have recovered uh, relatively well because of the goodwill, the sympathy, the support, uh, enormous uh, outpouring uh, of, of uh, empathy uh, from the Kenyan public and the Kamukunji public. So it has been uh, an uphill struggle, but um, quite worth it. I'm recovering and I'm back uh, at work uh, trying to do the job that I was elected to do in March. Mm -hmm. yeah. Of course, something that is really of great interest is the fact that when you look at politics in this country, it's normally generally uh, focused on money and effort. But for you, it was totally different. You managed to convince the people. Yes, indeed. And in fact, the people of uh, Kamkunji have turned... Uh, uh, this perception, this negative perception that Kenyans either vote because of ethnicity or because of money, uh, upside down. Uh, they have uh, uh, kind of uh, taken the challenge and uh, they looked at uh, my record uh, and, uh, and decided that uh, despite my condition that I was uh, hospitalized, uh, that uh, they would prefer me to, to, to lead them again, to continue the good job uh, that uh, we have done. And in some ways I think... Uh, uh, my incident has also helped to empower a team of young activists in my constituency who carried on uh, even during my absence and who now um, uh, 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 form the basis, uh, the foundation of the, the constituency, that the work that we are doing at the moment. Uh, I am there, but uh, they seem to be proactive and be out front there. So the people of Kamkunji has, have really shown that this stereotype uh, of... Uh, the perception that uh, most people have of Kenyans is, is not correct. Uh, Kenya is different. Kenya is changing. There are a lot of people who want to uh, elect people who uh, are based, based on their performance, based on what they can do for the constituency, rather than whether you know them uh, from the same church or from the same mosque or from the same ethnic group. And they're not interested in money. Your, your 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 predecessor, uh, Norman Nyaga, uh, he was it was Kamkunji was famous for not utilizing CDF fund, funds. In fact, uh, that I think that's one of the reasons why he lost because the money was never used. Uh, can you tell us in, uh, in the situation in which you are, how are you able to distribute and uh, use the CDF money effectively so that people have respect for you? I was there for only for 18 months yeah. in the last parliament yeah. and so we were under uh, a lot of pressure because we, we had to do a lot of things. I set up a, a very effective uh, CDF committee and they have performed very well. Now if you look at the latest report from the CDF board, Kamkunji is up there. Uh, I, I don't know what, the, they haven't done any rating, uh, but if you look at the results, uh, we have been able to achieve uh, implementing all the projects that we have uh, set to achieve. Uh, we uh, have um, used our money very efficiently and uh, we have a very good accountability system and it is one of the constituencies I would say if you look at it we never looked at uh, 
uh, at, uh, at projects uh, from a perspective of what the Member of Parliament is going to get out of it. It was more to do with the basic needs. It was based on needs assessment of what the constituency needed. In fact, on the day that, uh, the fateful day that I, I was injured, uh, I had uh, in the morning gone to Shaurimoyo to look at Bama Market. Bama Market was closed, uh, as you remember, because it was in a very bad, uh, messy condition. We have now improved the hygienic conditions. Uh, we have paved uh, uh, both inside and outside. We've built toilets uh, uh, for both uh, sections of the, of the, uh, of the market. Uh, we're now providing water so that it is clean uh, and, and hygienic. And if you now go to, uh, uh, to Bama Market, it looks very different from, wh from what, it, what it was before. This is a very important economic hub in our constituency, not only for Kamkunji but for the whole of Nairobi. And in uh, due course, we will do more uh, to make it uh, perform much better, to attract more customers and to benefit the constituency. Right. In an interview with The Nation um, in June, you were asked, uh, what is that one thing that keeps you awake at night? And you answered poverty and inequality. What are some of the things that you have done so far to handle those two things, poverty and inequality, in Kamukunji constituency? You know, first of all, poverty is, uh, is an issue that has to be tackled at a national level. You know, you need to have a, a government policy, a comprehensive uh, uh, policy to deal with it. Uh, but there are differences, there are little differences you can make at the constituency level. For example, we have a very large uh, youth population in Kamukunji. Uh, in fact, it is probably one of the largest in the country. There's a lot of unemployment, uh, lack of skills. So one of the projects that I put into place was uh, uh, youth training, uh, providing them with the necessary skills for them to be able to either enter the job market or to be able to uh, be self-employed. And uh, in the last uh, CDF uh, project uh, funding that we had, we sponsored more than a 1,000 uh, young people from the constituency to acquire certain skills like driving license, technical, mechanical, uh, for young women, uh, hairdressing. And many of them have been able to get uh, driving licenses and are now in the job market. They can apply, some of them are employed, some of them are looking for opportunities to be employed. The hairdressing, hairdressers, they have set up either their own uh, businesses or they have joined others. So this has taken um, more than a thousand youngsters who would have been idle uh, out of the, the streets into some form of employment and some form of uh, uh, ab ability to earn a livelihood and therefore reduce the, the number of people who are out there and who because of idolism or because of uh, poverty might uh, commit crimes that are quite common in inner city areas like Kamukunji. The other area that we have looked at is in, in, in helping youth groups to access the, the youth uh, fund, women groups to access the, the, the women fund so that they can um, start setting up their own projects. How, you, how are you doing that? That is, you know, we assist them in uh, trying to um, apply uh, in, in application. Uh, we train them into uh, how they can access the funds. We train them in how to uh, set up projects and things like that. And we're going to expand because I was only there for 18 months. It was. Uh, quite a short period. Hopefully in the next five years we will be able to reach uh, several thousand people uh, and take them out of the, the, the unemployment, uh, uh, un unemployment situation that are in into empl employable uh, situations, into earning livelihoods. Mm. You, you, uh, you, of course, uh, stand out because of um, your, your, your past as an activist, uh, you know, being um, an activist, especially looking at... Um, uh, this particular group that was called Ukenya and you stood out uh, together with the likes of uh, uh, Professor Ngugi Thiongo and you're known for that. Unfortunately you are part of a team that has been called MPigs because of the greed that seems to surround them. In fact, there was an article that was written yesterday by Ras Nawara saying that in this day and age we don't have the likes of Mahatma Gandhi's even in India. From your perspective, do we really have leaders who are absolutely concerned about what happens to the people they lead? 
Yes, I think they are. I think they are. This, it's unfortunate that um, uh, there is this negative image of uh, members of parliament. But for example, when I was running for office, uh, I didn't run for office because of uh, to get an income or to get a salary. In fact, uh, uh, salary-wise and in terms of benefits, I was earning much more. And uh, a lot of people said, what is wrong with you? Are you mentally balanced to be able to leave a well-paying job with uh, privileges and international position uh, and to, to, to come down uh, to a position where you would be getting less than you are earning? There, there's something wrong with you if you're not working on t uh, your upward mobility. Uh, so for me, it was after many years of being outside the country, after many years of working in international organizations, I wanted to come back home and uh, to be here, uh, to be part of the change. We cannot achieve uh, development, uh, the development goals that we, we are aspiring to, unless we all uh, put our efforts together. And therefore, being in parliament for me is serving the public, serving the people of Kamkunji uh, as their servant. I'm there to fulfill their needs, not uh, to empower myself or to enrich myself. And therefore, this emphasis on salaries and, and benefits uh, that has become uh, the albatross on the neck of members of parliament uh, is, is, is uh, unfortunate because we are there and there are many others. I, I wouldn't speak for every parliamentarian, but they're certainly very committed, uh, very determined members of parliament who are making a difference in their constituencies. And with the present government that we have, uh, I fully believe in the manifesto, the Jubilee Manifesto. Because, as you say, with my background, at the beginning we were fighting for democracy. We were fighting for human rights. We were fighting for a democratic space, which didn't exist. Uh, we have now achieved uh, it. We need to uh, deepen and entrench our democracy. But uh, we have now moved to another phase. The, n the biggest challenge that we're facing now is uh, uh, social empowerment. Uh, dealing with social injustices, creating equity, creating wealth and development so that our country can go up. And this is a different kind of struggle, which is to work and empower our constituencies so that we become uh, uh, a developed country. Uh, it's a different case. And, and unless we can fight poverty and inequality in urban and rural areas, we put money in there. And it is in the Jubilee Manifesto. And uh, both President Uhuru Kenyatta and uh, uh, Deputy President William Ruto are committed uh, to, and as a parliamentarian, I would make sure that uh, we don't uh, uh, we, we we don't miss uh, on the manifesto. We would make sure that the manifesto of Jubilee is Im implemented uh, effectively and fully, and that way, uh, Kamkunji and other places in Nairobi can become developed uh, and, and and achieve uh, the goals that have been set up uh, when we started uh, the, this new. Uh, parliamentary uh, term w in March. You said that um, <coughs> we are fighting for democracy, now we have achieved it. Well, uh, if you look at the society Kenya today, there are a lot of people who feel unhappy of the election results and they have not accepted Jubilee, their leadership. Uh, they think, they, they say the election was stolen and they, they cannot accept. What do you think should be done to mollify those people and bring them to understand that we have a government. Yes, first of all, democracy is a process. An election is an event. Yeah. That event has happened. Uh, the Kenyan people have uh, uh, made uh, their decision. There are winners and losers in every election. And uh, the, one of the problems of uh, new democracies is the fact that people are never prepared <coughs> for defeat. Yeah. You would never see uh, a, a political party in Africa or some parts of Asia or Latin America yeah. that accepts election results. Why in mature democracies, you accept to win and you accept to lose. And I think the, the way so far um, the, the current government has gone about bringing Kenyan people together is the right way. For example, I've seen the deputy president, he was in the cost. Uh,